Hello there. Welcome back to Dr. K. Prem Primer Lecture Series presenting by Dr. K. Prem. That's me. Today we will talk about uh, PBR 322 cloning strategy and uh, insertional inactivation. Insertional inactivation. That's a method to screen the uh, recombinants when you use PBR322 as a vector. So to understand the cloning strategy and insertion in inactivation, let us understand the uh, uh, various features of uh, PBR322 very briefly, then we'll, we move to the cloning strategy. So this is a PBR322 vector whose molecular size is a 4,363 base pairs. It is having five important features. The first one is uh, origin of replication that is required for the autonomous replication of plasmid in the host. Then the second one is uh, ROP, repressor of primer that's required for the regulation of a uh, copy number of plasmid. And the third one is uh, genetic selection markers. Well, here it is having two genetic selection markers. One is a tetracycline resistant gene and the second, second uh, antibiotic selection marker is ampicillin resistance gene. So tetracycline resistance marker encodes a, a transport protein, that's a efflex transporter protein that efflects the uh, inflexed uh, tetracycline from uh, E. coli to outside so that uh, the E. coli which is having the plasmid is able to go in the presence of uh, antibiotic tetracycline. Similarly, the um, ampicillin resistance gene that's nothing but uh, beta lactamase is able to degrade or hydrolyze the penicillin into, into penicillinic acid. So whenever uh, E. coli is having a PBR322, it produces the beta lactamase and it, it can grow in the presence of uh, ampicillin because it is, able, it is having a ability to degrade that ampicillin. And the last one, last feature is the unique restriction site. Those unique restriction sites are present in the uh, genetic selection markers. Those unique restriction sites facilitate the cloning of gene of interest. So these uh, unique restriction sites are present in the uh, tetracycline resistance marker and uh, ampicillin resistance marker. You can see the, uh, in case of uh, uh, ampicillin resistance gene, PST1, PU1, SCAN1, BSA1, and AAC1, these are the different restriction sites which are present in the uh, ampicillin resistance gene. When it comes to the tetracycline, there are around nine different restriction sites. Unique restriction sites are present in the tetracycline uh, resistance gene. So these restriction sites can be used to clone your gene of interest. In today's, uh, in today, I'm going to use the BAMH1, BAMH1 restriction sites, to, re restrictions site to clone the my gene of interest into the PBR322. BAMH1 restriction site is GGA, GGA, TCC. That's a restriction site. So in the next. Uh, slide you can see here uh, this is a BAMH1 restriction site this is a BAMH1 restriction site that's a GGA TCC whenever uh, we want to clone we required two uh, components one is the insert and the vector so insert I am preparing the insert for cloning so this is the genomic DNA which is having the two uh, restriction sites of BAMH1 when I digest with the BAMH1 restriction enzyme, it produces the uh, two, uh, three uh, fragments. You can see first fragment, second fragment, and the third fragment. This fragment, we want to clone the, the green fragment. We want to clone, which is uh, bearing the restriction, uh, uh, cohesive restriction sites at the ends, right? And uh, we are going to use the unidirectional cloning strategy in, in uh, here. So unidirectional cloning strategy means employing the only one restriction site to clone your gene of interest into the vector. So here, the 
the insert is prepared by using the BAMH1. Similarly, the vector also digested by the BAMH1. Right? So you see, the vector is digested with the BAMH1. Uh, after digestion, the vector is linearized with the cohesive ends. So the vector we have in the cohesive ends and the insert is having the cohesive ends. Now we can ligate uh, both of both the vector and insert is a three is to one ratio by using a, a T4 DNA ligase. You can see T4 DNA ligase uh, can be used to ligate the vector, vector and the insert. So whenever you are doing the ligation, uh, ligation is uh, uh, employed by the T4 DNA ligase and the ligation reaction can be uh, can be at uh, 16 degrees centigrade or uh, 4 degrees centigrade for overnight. When you do the ligation, when you do the ligation, there are two possibilities. One is the intramolecular ligation and uh, intermolecular ligation. Intramolecular ligation means self ligation of vector self ligation of vector is a intramolecular ligation and intermolecular ligation means a ligation between the vector and insert you can see see intramolecular ligation me uh, also also possible because the cohesive ends are very close and they are adjacent so so self ligation or intramolecular ligation leads to the or again vector whenever a ligation happens between the two molecules that is a vector and insert and you get a intram intermolecular ligation you see the insert is cloned in the tcr gene that's a tetracycline gene when a gene of your interest is cloned into the one of the genetic selection marker that's genetic selection marker that is here tetracycline will lose the its open reading from frame and it cannot encode the protein so you, you can see so whenever you clone your gene of interest into the genetic selection marker then the genetic selection marker is inactivated so you are inserting a your gene of interest into the genetic selection marker that leads to the inactivation of genetic selection marker this is called as insertional inactivation so you as i, as I said uh, self ligation is possible through the intramolecular ligation and intermolecular ligation leads to the recombinant plasmid so when you do ligation these two types of uh, 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 ligations are possible when you this ligation mixture is uh, transformed into the e coli See, you see, this is a ligation mixture consists of uh, a ligated, a self ligated, uh, self ligated vector and uh, intermolecular ligated means recombinant, recombinant uh, vector. And uh, there may be a unligated, uh, maybe unligated ones will be there. And these are uh, transformed into the E. coli. This E. coli is a, is a sense to to ampicillin and tetracycline. When you plate this E. coli, when you when you plate, as I'm saying, when you grow E. coli in the presence of uh, ampicillin or tetracycline, it cannot grow. So such E. coli has taken, and the ligation mixture is transformed into the E. coli. Now this E. coli transformed E. coli. First, we are uh, a plating on a nutrient media which consists of ampicillin. Why ampicillin? Because the recombinant plasmids are uh, possible when uh, tetracycline gene is uh, uh, inactivated by insertion of your gene of interest. So first we have to score the transformants on a, a media consists of ampicillin. See, this is a nutrient media with the ampicillin uh, antibiotic. Then uh, after incubation at 37, the, uh, by, by 16 hours, you can see, uh, you can see the, you can see the uh, bacterial colonies, right? 
but out of this bacterial colonies, you don't know which one of them are recombinants, right? So if you want to understand, to screen the recombinants, we have to do the replica plating. Replica plating. What is replica plating? If you take a uh, uh, filter paper, the same size of uh, same size of uh, petri dish, and this uh, this uh, filter paper is placed on the uh, bacterial colonies here, uh, bacterial colonies, and that uh, filter paper is exactly in the same orientation is placed on uh, another nutrient media which consists of a tetracycline, right? It's a replica, a replica plating, and uh, then uh, that uh, that uh, uh, media that the plate is again incubated at 37 for overnight. Then you can see the colonies, right? So the number of colonies present in the ampicillin plate and the number of colonies which are present on the uh, tetracycline plates are uh, less. Here you have almost 11 colonies, but when it comes to the here, only eight colonies are present, right? So how do you screen the recombinants? Means if you see some colonies are uh, missing on the tetracycline plate. So you can see the, play, the uh, bacterial colony which is there here is missing here. And again, it is, in, it is there in the ampicillin, it is missing in the tetracycline plate. Again, you see, if you compare the position, there are uh, three positions, the bacterial colonies are not grown on the tetracycline plate. So what it means, the, uh, the colonies which are grown on the both uh, ampicillin plate and tetracycline plate, it means that, that that bacteria have the ability to grow in the presence of ampicillin and tetracycline. Means what? It is having a vector, that vector PBR322, so that it can grow, it can grow in the presence of ampicillin, in the presence of ampicillin as well as the tetracycline. When it comes to these uh, three, one, two, three, which are not able to grow on a tetracycline plate, it means that the plasmid or the PBR322 have an intact ampicillin, but, but because of insertion of your gene of interest into the tetracycline, they lost the tetracycline, tetracycline gene, which encodes the tetracycline transporter, right? So it lost it, it's a gene. Hence, because of that reason, that plas that bacteria which is having the recombinant plasmid lost the tetracycline gene, hence it is not able to grow on the media consist of consist of tetracycline right so there are total 11 colonies are formed in the formed on the ampicillin rest ampicillin plate but out of a uh, 11 only eight are able to grow uh, remaining three are not able to grow it means that remaining three are recombinants and the eight are non-recombinants. You see, these are not able to grow because the host is not, the host do not have a tetracycline resistance because you inserted your gene of interest into the tetracycline resistance gene, right? And uh, these three, so these three colonies, one, two, three, did not grow on the tetracycline uh, plate. So you can pick up them. They are the, your recombinant clones. And the rest all, rest eight are non-recombinants or just a transformant. Means they are having the, oh, they are having the self-ligated vector. Self-ligated vector, which consists of both tetracycline and uh, ampicillin resistance gene. Because of that reason, these eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, these eight 
bacterial colonies are able to grow in the presence of ampicillin and tetracycline. But uh, when it comes to these three, one, two, three, they are able, they, ha they have only ampicillin resistance gene. Because of that reason, they're able to grow in the presence of ampicillin. But when you streak on, uh, grow on uh, uh, media with the tetracycline, they don't grow because their gene of the, the tetracycline is inactivated because of in such enough your gene of interest. This is how you can screen the uh, recombinants when you clone with the clone in the tetracycline gene. So insertional inactivation. You see, when uh, gene of your when your gene of interest is inserted into the tetracycline. Because of insertion, a tetracycline gene is inactivated. Tetracycline gene is inactivated. So once it is inactivated, it cannot confer the resistance, uh, tetracycline resistance to the host. So that's, this method is called as uh, insertional inactivation. Whereas self-ligated vector have intact tetracycline resistance gene and ampicillin resistance gene. So the E. coli which received the received the uh, uh, ampicillin uh, received the self-ligated vector, it is able to grow on uh, tetracycline as well as ampicillin. Okay, hope you understand. And you see, in such an inactivation, a DNA fragment or gene of interest is ligated into the one of the coding region of antibody resistance gene marker here, uh, tetracycline. The plasmid vector, then the antibiotic resistance gene is inactivated by insertion of gene of interest. The recombinant plasmid cannot import resistance to E. coli and it becomes sensitive to respect to antibiotic. So the recombinants are selected from the transformant based on the inactivation of genetic selection marker by insertion of gene. Hence, this method is called as a insertional inactivation. So whenever you clone your gene of interest into the one of the genetic selection marker, here uh, antibiotic resistance gene, that gene is inactivated. Once it is inactivated, it cannot confer a resistance to the host. Then inactivated, inactivated uh, antibiotic resistance gene is become sensitive, that host becomes sensitive to the that particular antibiotic. Okay. So example is a uh, Cloning into the PBR322. You see, which method do you use to screen the recombinants by using PBR322 vector? Or you see, insertion inactivation, alpha complementation, western blotting, and hybrid RS translation. Please let me know the answer for this question through the comment section uh, whenever you understand this concept. And this is all about uh, PBR322 cloning, cloning strategy, and insertional inactivation. Thank you for listening, and uh, hope you understand the concept. If at all, try to subscribe me for regular updates. And also, if you have any comments, please let me know through the comment session. And if you like, try to uh, give a thumbs up. Don't forget this one. Okay. See you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye. This is your Dr. Prem Sagar.